want to thank everybody attending tonight. Uh, we apologize for uh, being a little bit late to start the meeting. We had a lot of personal issues that we did discuss prior to coming out. Um, so at this time, anybody in the audience who would like to make a public comment, please step up to the microphone, give us your name, your address. Please, if you could, keep the comments to five minutes or less. Sally Schoenberg, 41 Mitchell Drive, Carnegie. I just want to take a minute to really um, kind of recap uh, how I feel and where I am with Dr. White. We have an eight year contract extension that we worked very diligently with Dr. White to achieve. And um, I think that that speaks highly of his, his character and his integrity. Um, we worked diligently with Dr. White to achieve the goals that this board um, set with regards to curriculum leaders, instructional practitioners. We also worked very, very diligently as a group to design the new high school, middle school. We spent almost a good year working on that. And um, that took us away from our students, but we were willing to do it because we knew it meant a better education for our children. I am very sad to see Dr. White go. Butler's gain is our serious loss. He is, he is an eminent um, <clears throat> superintendent. I've worked with many over the course of my almost 30 years of education, and he is by far tops. With that said, I'm very concerned that his very abrupt departure to Butler may have something to do with the internal workings of the board. And that concerns me very much so. With that also as being said, we only have a handful of people left in the upper administrative positions that work with us from the beginning that know that will be project. And so I would encourage you very much to appoint one of the folks that are left. There's only about four of them left. So to go outside of this right now, I, it would be disastrous. <clears throat> disastrous. So I, I am encouraging the board, number one, to select an internal candidate for superintendent. Um, and if there are issues within the board, they need to be worked out so that it does not affect this district of the children in the community. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. I went on vacation. Did you guys the same? No. <laughs> I know, right? It's vacation time. I didn't know you guys worked in the summer. Um, my name is Michelle Sedlak, 1595 Spreading Oak Drive, and I brought notes. Um, first thing I want to discuss is actually what the school board mission statement is. And I want to start with number one, which is to function with integrity and transparency. Uh, when searching for the board meeting minutes, they've last been updated as of 5:25 this evening for May 25th meeting. So I could not find out anything that was discussed at the July 25th meeting, um, and especially that outlined this new secretary position which uh, was kind of interesting considering, and I'm going to uh, base something off of uh, what Mrs. Schulenberger had said, was that we are consolidating positions, and we just keep dwindling down staff, and dwindling down staff, and dwindling down staff, and now we're creating a new position that should be filled with somebody that was a staff position. Uh, so I'm concerned about the what exactly that person's job is, what it's supposed to be, how it's supposed to work, how it's supposed to function within the community. Is this just between the district and the board? Does the community have the ability to speak with this person to address their issues with things that are happening in the district? Uh, so hopefully that's on the agenda this evening. I guess I'll get to hear about it then. Um, the number two thing in the mission statement is to increase community engagement. And that several meetings ago, I suggested that we videotape our board meetings. And I, oh man, see what literally it's on here. 
suggested it, and lo and behold, it's here. Is that going to be something that is consistent and that occurs? Because uh, if so, I'm totally for it. If not, I'm going to once again lobby for it. Um, because you are making decisions for all of our community, and you hear about them after you put these decisions into place, and parents decide to show up and say, hey, wait, we don't like this. Instead of being proactive about it and being able to see that this is what's going to be happening. And I think that having it in video take form, mm -hmm. video things to go back to and take a look at is only going to benefit us in the long run. So I do hope that that is going to continue. The third thing in the mission statement is to advocate for the school district and the community in the region. Um, the question that I have is how much interaction does our school district and our school board interact with Scott Township, with Collier Township, and with Bridgeville Borough Meeting? Do they know what we're doing? Do we know what they're doing? Is there an inter integration process between they should be on board with the things that are going on here? And likewise, you know, we should know what's going on in their community, but like we kind of all agree we live there, so we kind of do. But I don't know that the Scott Township commissioners even know what we've discussed here. Um, I don't know that anybody gets back to any one of them. I don't know if there's somebody selected from each one of the different <laughs> municipalities that goes to those meetings, which is kind of impossible because they're occurring right now, too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but once again, that is something that needs to be addressed. Why are Scott Township board meetings the exact same time as the school district meeting? They and if so, they right, they won't change their schedule. And they actually said that you guys changed your schedule because you didn't want them here. Uh, <laughs> when you talk with community members that don't talk, it gets interesting. I don't listen. I'm Switzerland. I don't believe a word of anything I hear. So anyway, you know, there should be somebody interfacing with them. And if, not, if no one from here can make it there, I think the district has every right and reasonable assumption that they should be ascending a, a representative to speak for the school district and, and what is going on. You know, they have, the last meeting I went to, it, it, it's a free-for-all. It, it is an absolute free for all. I, I, I just sat there just completely amazed and extremely disappointed. Um, so, those were the three things that I wanted to bring up and how I see they address uh, what the school board mission statement is. And I want to see the mission statement followed through with a little more clearly uh, moving forward. Um, and I, I would really implore the Board to look at, and I, I, not because I wasn't here for the 25th meeting, but the meeting prior to that, and I said, I'm really concerned that we're going to be house poor. Um, we have consolidated uh, positions, and you've got five different people, you know, wearing five, you know, one person wearing five different hats, and it's just, uh, it, it kind of really makes me sick to my stomach a lot, um, and I want to see that change. I want to see us have a business manager. I want to see us have, you know, all of the different positions that we have, and the, you know, I want to see a principal be a principal, not the, you know, in charge of, uh, you know, working out that curriculum for, you know, the, this this group of students and, and everything else, and and I want to, I, I just want, I want the best for our district, and I don't know how much stock and value you put in the Nietzsche report, but it just came out. Mount Lebanon's number seven. We saw that coming. Who didn't know that, right? Chartres Valley made a really nice showing at 150 out of 495. So 497. The difference between Mount Lebanon and I know, listen, statistics can say anything you want them to. They don't take into account a lot of the stuff that we do and a lot of the stuff that other school districts don't. But one thing that is clear is they're spending twenty thousand dollars per student. We're spending fifteen not per student to educate them. So based on that information, once again, I'm concerned about where we're headed academically. Um, I have invested a tremendous amount of time in, in looking at numbers and researching things, and I don't believe that Nietzsche's best and end-all be-all. There's other barometers for this. Um, but it is, it is extremely concerning to me. And when I hear it from, and you have to understand, I'm, fr I'm friends with 
people in our district, and I am friends with people in every district. I, mean, I, I have business relationships with almost every single school district in our area, in every different administrative capacity, administrative, educational, with all of, all of their information as well. And when I get the feeling that we're shortchanging a lot of things, that's, that's when I start becoming concerned. And, um, you know, we can't afford to pay for uh, school books for students, and we can't afford to do certain things. And, and I, you know, I had the discussion with Dr. White a couple months ago, and, and I told him what I was hearing. When, when you start telling me that we can't add another autistic support classroom because we don't have the staff, hire the staff. If we need another autistic support classroom, you hire the staff. That's all there is to it. You can't tell me that that doesn't translate into a better district. Sorry, <laughs> so I wasn't going to get emotional. Sorry about that. Um, but that is all. I hope everybody's having a really good summer and everybody had the opportunity to get away. You know, I'm going to get away from the microphone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> is there anyone else that would like to make a comment? Okay. Um, without a superintendent in place tonight, I think we should get the next one. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Yeah. But let's, let's uh, move on to the uh, consent agenda. Uh, there's no consent agenda, so we'll move right to action discussion. Uh, on 4.1 uh, tonight in executive session, we discussed the uh, resignation of our superintendent currently, Dr. Brian White. Uh, initially, we were going to uh, use the September 1st date as the resignation date. But in the executive session, we came out and agreed to uh, the August 31st date. So I'm going to ask for a motion to accept the resignation of Brian J. White, Jr. as superintendent of the Chartier Valley School District. Effective August 31st. And I get a motion. And that would be effective at the close of business on August, August 31st. Mm -hmm. So moved. Mr. Kramer. Second. Mr. Kearney. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And, and just uh, did, did Mr. Stevenson vote? Jamie, did you hear? I did, and I said aye. Okay, yeah. thank you, Jamie. Okay, so motion approved. Um, with that being said, uh, I would like to, and I've already done this uh, via our website and I've a public statement, but I would like to uh, thank Dr. White for his seven years of service. Um, he served this district uh, tirelessly and with uh, a great amount of effort in all aspects dealing with the teachers, with the administration, the students, the communities. Um, we couldn't thank him enough for the position we, he has left us in, uh, but I'm also confident that you know, he's doing the right thing for himself and his family. Uh, Sally said it, that Butler's getting a great man, but I also think he left us in a great position to be able to take our district to the next level where we want to be and how we want to be. So uh, thank you, Dr. White, for that. And uh, great segue to our, our next uh, action discussion item is to appoint a acting superintendent and to uh, Sally's concerns we as a board were obviously uh, very much uh, aware of the same the same reasoning that Sally was discussing we truly believe that there's nobody outside this district who would be able to come in and effectively lead our district as, as an acting superintendent than, than the person that we've chosen to do that and, was an easy decision because uh, you know, Scott Seltzer has been here the past seven years along with Dr. White helping move this district to where we are today and uh, we have asked um, and, and voted unanimously to uh, ask Scott Seltzer to be our acting superintendent so uh, I would like to get a motion to appoint Scott Seltzer as our acting superintendent of 
Chartiers Valley School District effective September 1st, 2017. Mm -hmm. Next president, I think we should note that that's in a stipend of $2,000. Additional excellent yes. services as an acting superintendent. Thank you. So <coughs> I got a motion from Mrs. Leslie, second by Mr. Poor. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. So moved. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Hey, buddy. You got to move. Congratulations. Sit <laughs> by the press. Come on up. <laughs> Come on down. <laughs> Still have to take notes. Still have to take notes. It's all right. It's like a whisper in your ear for some time. Kind of <laughs> <laughs> with, this, with this unanimous uh, decision by the board, we are confident in Scott's abilities to, to take the, the reins here as our acting superintendent um, to coordinate the ongoing efforts of our new administrative positions that, that uh, have just been put in place and to coordinate the continued construction project that has also taken place. So uh, Scott has very much uh, been involved in many of these processes already. Uh, his, his, uh, his abilities, I think, are already well known, but we are also excited about the unknowns we know about Scott. So, you know, once, once someone's put in a leadership role, you, you, you often sight, see sides of them you never saw before. So I'm ex extremely excited to see those new sides of Scott as well. Did you say that? <laughs> <laughs> so, welcome to the board if you'd like to make any comments. No, I, 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 you know, I'm flattered, honestly. Uh, very humbled uh, to follow in Dr. White's footsteps and be part of this, uh, to stay part of this community and this education. It's a humbling experience. Um, thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> I'm a big believer that it's a we and us mentality. Um, it's not a me, it's not an I, but it's what the best we can do together in the short term Valley School District, and especially our short term Valley students. And I will maintain that we and us mentality throughout um, as long as I'm in this position. Uh, 4.3, we are uh, looking to get a motion to approve the human resources report. Has that, everybody had an opportunity to review that? Yes. Does anybody have any questions or comments regarding it? Can I get a motion to approve the human resources report? Report as the report has been attached. Mrs. Murphy, second by Mrs. Patel. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So moved. Okay. The uh, board secretary position, 4.4. I believe we are going to table that discussion. Um, yes. So, there was some discussion um, initially about the board secretary <coughs> position, whether it be a paid position, a hired position, what that role is going to look like. Um, with Dr. White's departure and, and uh, Mr. Seltzer's uh, appointment, we are now going to take a, 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 a step back, consider what that role is going to look like, and then, you know, not not abandon the thoughts of doing it, but I want to get Scott's opinion, the board wants to get Scott's opinion on what that role should look like. Uh, in the past, it's, it's, it's served uh, by an internal administrative position with our, with our finance director. Um, so, uh, not saying that we're looking to add a position, but we're certainly looking at our options on what that position is going to look like and how it's going to look. So that... that I think it gives us some clarity moving forward how, how we're going to handle that. Um, 
and I think it's going to be a good discussion point uh, for, for this board and for our administration. <clears throat> so we're going to table 4.4 for tonight. Uh, 4.5, our construction report. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. If you could, Jason, give us your report. And okay, the uh, summary I sent in front of everybody. Okay, so we're clearly coming down to the wire here. Um, uh, the first point on my summary through July is the July updates to the schedules were received. Kind of in line where we anticipated, we're coordinating and reviewing those with each GC um, down the finish line here to start of school. The middle school status, uh, there's a lot happening in there, clearly. Um, in the phase 1A is the portion of the building that we need to turn over for school. Uh, so there's clearly painting is ongoing, uh, the ceiling tile, ceiling grid, finishes are going in and being completed. Toilet partitions, accessories, and so forth. The bathrooms are also being installed and being completed on the third and second floors down to the first. Uh, the flooring and carpet is ongoing. Um, the electrical power distribution is essentially done. Panels are energized. The permanent lights are now on as of Saturday. Big milestone that I mentioned two weeks ago. The elevator inspection occurred today, and we passed the elevator inspection. So we have an operating elevator as of whatever 3 p.m. today. Um, item F under my middle school. Uh, we're still trying to target, even if it's a day or two prior to the 18th, uh, to work with the district and an IKM to get the moving in started on the third floor. Part of that was clearly having an elevator to get there. Uh, so we're diligently trying to make that happen to give you any extra day possible. The chillers, the chillers operational, the rooftop units are operational. It's actually nice and cool inside the building. Uh, fire alarm pre-testing started this week, so that annoying noise of fire alarm started, which is a good sign. Uh, they're programming that. Um, so that's Clearly going down the path of being ready for school. Uh, the sprinkler system also is essentially ready. A few rooms need some heads installed and the system will be filled with water very shortly. So uh, that's essentially a, a snapshot of phase 1A through today. Um, there's a lot still happening, there's a lot of cleanup still to do, um, but we're headed in the direction to get a few guys moved in. And, Start school. There's no major indication that that's going to happen. Phase 1B work still continues in there, which is supposed to be turned over towards Christmas. Uh, MAP rough in and drywall work. Um, out on the site, sort of jumping down to item N, um, the GC is really going to start pushing now the site work in front of the main entrance and around the side of the building where the tower is for secure egresses and um, life safety requirements and fire requirements. So those should be put in in the next two weeks um, for the four schools. So that's the status of the middle school. The high school. Can I stop here? Yes, absolutely. Uh, just for clarification, uh, and I want this to be on public record. We are going to open school on time. And we are going to have our students in a safe environment for education, correct? Yes, there's no indication of that will uh, I just want to make very clear to the public that that is going to be the case. I've heard out in the community, I've heard rumors that our teachers are being asked to come back two weeks later. I've heard this and I've heard that. <laughs> I, I, I just want to make it very clear that our school is going to be operationally safe for our students on September 4th when the school starts. That's Clearly the goal. Um, there are some backup plans if some life safety issues are at risk mm -hmm. um, that we've talked about. So yeah, 
school should start on. And I want to thank you guys for getting us to this point because I know it's it's been uh, it's an accelerated and, and, and very uh, rigorous process, and, and it's uh, it's it's keeping us on schedule and on plan, and uh, that's that was the goal, and that's where we're at. And I, I appreciate that. But I just wanted to make sure that you you were on the same page as I am. That's where we're at. Yeah, okay. Standing here, telling you all about Thank you. There's no plan for an extended summer vacation. No. Sorry, Sally. I have a vacation plan for this year. No. I think it's On the high school. So the high school. Jason, can I just ask a couple quick qualifications? Sure. So your reference to the backup plans, just for my understanding, what would those be related to? Depends on the issue. Um, clearly, it's life safety. For example, the fire alarm wasn't operational. You may have to implement a 24 hour, seven day a week fire watch, um, which has to hire a company or somebody to basically be in the building to look for fires. That's a lot of additional expense. Thank you. Yeah. You read my mind. Yeah. <laughs> and then, um, in terms of uh, the building opening uh, for the students, so I know there was previous talk about like addressing punch list items, perhaps evenings and so forth. Is that still on the table based on where you guys are now in time? Right now, we just had a meeting with IKM and DC, and we've scheduled IKM to perform some punch lists starting next week, um, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So clearly, we'll have to coexist while you guys start to move in and try to do some punch lists at the same time. If that becomes too cumbersome, we'll push them to the second shift. Got it. And so then the goal is all the punch list stuff should be completed at the same time the moving in is completed it, at which time the kids are coming. As much as possible, yes. Uh, I will tell you, it is typical, it, it can lag in the school year, um, but most of the time those are, you know, just touch up painting kind of things, nothing substantial but would affect the daily operations of the school And also be clear on that, that's all at the contractor's expense. It's all the contractor. They're working second shift or they're working third shift, that's part of their, that's part of their due diligence. That's part of their due diligence, that's correct. Thank you. So the high school, um, really phase 1B is, is, is ready. Uh, I think the district has to get there cleaned and, and ready to go. Um, the only last item I should say in phase 1B is the wood dance floor, which um, we made a conscious decision to push that off until the space is sufficient. That is scheduled for installation in the middle of next week. So that should be ready for school as well. Uh, phase 1C, the tech ed, um, is, is, is done. Punch list has occurred. Punch lists are being addressed. Uh, the district started to move in on August 1st. Um, so while well, going this staff, we started to get that to place um, ready for school. Uh, the site work outside of Tech Ed is ongoing. Uh, the curbs and sidewalks are complete. Um, the paving activities actually commenced yesterday. Um, actually today, they were grading. The fine grading, uh, the sub base <coughs> tomorrow, the next couple of days, and they plan to put the binder coat down on Friday or Monday. Um, so that outside is starting to come together and get cleaned up as well. Phase 2A, um, if you have been up there, the, the high school tower is essentially down, there's like 2% of it left. Um, so it is changing drastically up there. Um, the critical area, item 2, C2 there, is the cafeteria service area, which is in between essentially the pool and the kitchen. Um, we had to demo down through the basement and come back out of the ground with the foundations of structural steel. The steel started yesterday. 
you need the steel to complete some infrastructure across that area. Uh, that is scheduled to start on Monday with gas line, domestic water line, and a uh, power line that needs to get over to your existing um, power synergy by the gym. Give me one second, Mr. Doctor. If you dial Mr. Stevenson back in, please. We lost him. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Okay, Jay, we got you back. Yeah, sorry about that, guys. No problem. Thanks, Jason. Um, so, starting about phase 2A of uh, a critical area, getting this deal in place so your infrastructure can bridge that gap. That's going to plan, that's how we planned it out in the last two months. Um, that's probably the most critical part of the high school to get your infrastructure back on. Uh, the auditorium, um, air handling units are installed, uh, scheduled for startup uh, middle of next week. We're targeting uh, the 15th to get those things running. So that little sort of side activity away from the high school has gone well. Uh, phase 2B is the area behind the kitchen, the service area. Um, <laughs> is coming together. It's kind of a staging area right now for part of two-way, but it will be cleaned up and turned over to you guys here in a few weeks. Um, a couple other items that I didn't put on here, uh, the gas service campus. If you drive by your main entrance, you may see that there's an excavator there and people's gas trucks. So that is occurring. Um, with any luck, we have the gas service back to campus by the end of next week, it's a part of the uh, so <laughs> Clearly that will help get equipment fired up, boiler fired up again where we need the natural gas. So we've been in communication with people's gas to uh, make sure they make that happen so there's no issue with natural gas. Um, site work related to the main drive, they will pave portion of the main entry from Tom's Run Road up to the intersection where you can turn right to the new middle school. Uh, that may happen second of the last week of August. So that should be uh, ready prior for the start of school. Um, you drive around front, there's a lot of sort of repair work on the sidewalks that needs addressed. Uh, the GC is very much aware of that. He's going to address that with temporary paving. So those sidewalks are passable and safe for the students and staff. So that is really a quick snapshot of where we're at tonight. Um, any questions related to the high school or anything else? Any other rumors we need to address? <laughs> okay. And then uh, on the agenda, there's a couple of change orders. Um, one I do need to talk about that I probably don't have on the main agenda is our items 4C that I have on my summary. The middle school, the detention tank liner. Uh, so that's the issue where your second storm detention tank down by the stadium entrance exit off the Palms Road Road, where we ran into potential, some potential mine subsidence of about, I don't know, three or four weeks ago, we got to the point where we got the, the design, and we got some initial pricing from the GC uh, that needs to be vetted out, but I wanted to put that in front of you. We probably need to direct them to proceed with the subcontractor that specializes in this lining of the tanks uh, to get them scheduled um, so we don't lose sort of the window to get them scheduled. So I don't know if we need to make that vote on or if we just need to agree to proceed, bet out the price, and maybe ratify that. <coughs> and 
then um, on the agenda two change orders, and if any clarification or questions from those, I'll be happy to. <laughs> Just talk us through the just sure. to refresh us. I know we've discussed it, but just to get refreshed. No the uh, with the IAS change order, is actually a couple older items that um, need ratified. It ends up as a credit. I deleted a little bit of work and then uh, add, a, add the three way control valve to the uh, hot water system uh, that Tower added by uh, an ASI. So those are the two for the Gallia. Change order. Uh, the middle school, RB Mechanical, a few items for them, um, mostly E and O related to just questions that arose from RFIs or ASIs issued by the architect uh, that needed done to complete their work for that building. Anybody have any questions or comments on this? Can you just speak, sorry, and I, mean, I know you probably already talked about this in the construction meetings, but on um, exterior deck work, the insulation, I'm just looking at the item E. Yeah, item E. Yeah. Um, so the dust collector uh, that sits outside of the new middle school tech ed um, has an upper that comes out from the inside to this collector that gets the dust when they do the activity. Um, he missed specifying the insulation on the one. So he did that. So the high school had it already, but he um, inadvertently missed it from the middle school. So we had that. Did you have any attention, Mike? Did we get other prices for that? He went out to two contractors to do that work. Um, essentially gave them the same scope of work. So the price reflected is part of the lowest guy that was there. So yeah, there was sort of a competitive process. Okay. Thank you. That's in, that's in uh, response to a potential sinkhole issue that we yes. had or, or bad, bad footing underneath that. that yeah. Um, the way I understand it is that the grade as it goes down to Collinsworth Road there, we're actually getting closer to the pole scene. Um, so I guess there was some evidence of 12 inch diameter holes that some of the ground dropped down about three feet, not substantial, but enough to um, do something to the detention tank that's gonna hold water uh, to try to prevent that in the future when that goes in and gets back. So would that have been identified at the beginning, right? Like when we did the, I, I don't know the proper terminology, but when we did the ground, when they looked at the ground and did the assessment before the building or anything of that nature occurred? I can't really speak, but I guess if you do the geotech report, right. your test scores. Uh, there's a certain, you're talking about subservice yeah. Yeah. Right. There are certain, you, you could spend a fortune trying to Subsurface so investigation over your entire site, but typically it's limited to you can have structural footprint and building okay. and the surrounding area imminently around there. Typically, you don't go that far reaching into, into this area. And quite honestly, you could take five there and maybe never hit the scene and never have known until you got into this, this position. Mm -hmm. So that's why we always have third party. Uh, person there to advise and recommend when situations like this occur. <laughs> and I believe the lodgers at Special Street Line, they go to the folks that we recommended that they use to more past the hours. That was one of those big things. Yeah, so they would feel comfortable if they got the right, the right people. It's just a matter of it's, it's, it's an extra work that needs to be yeah. yeah. So, on the update items, for D and E, the contingencies. So, can you comment a little bit on uh, where we are with respect to contingencies and how <coughs> that uh, reflects where we should be given the state of the project? So, I think we talked briefly last time, just sort of summarizing. There's a construction contingency of three point three million dollars. Um, my two items there kind of give you a, a snapshot of item D is what has been 
spent and could be spent uh, with my risk management law that's depending on the 1.56% of that contingency is going to be spent. Uh, the balance remaining, uh, with what we're aware of, is the 2.5 ages of over $2 million left in the contingency. Um, time wise, we're through one year. Volume of work wise, we're past uh, 50%. We're pushing, I think, around 60. Is that overall, or are you just talking specific middle school? Or overall, with the high school and the middle right. school. Um, the volume of work really from spring through now is the direct peak uh, with the middle school, and then it'll clearly it'll start to ramp down once we turn over to <coughs> Wouldn't be starting to follow behind. Um, now there's still foundations and unforeseen conditions coming out of the ground for phase two A, um, which has been really the, the thorn in our side for this project. Clearly, at the middle school, we incur some of that that could occur for phase two A for next school. Um, we're getting through really the tunnel issues that we've talked about. Um, we allocated sort of a target value of what could occur there. Uh, I think that should come in below that. So we're starting to see some of those costs filter in. We'll vet those out and we'd like to present those to you next month. It's unfortunate. So the terminology on, on D, it says contingency percentage with pending values included the including the above. So it, that yeah, so the detention tank liner and those two change orders are in that value. Okay. And then E says contingency percentage remaining with pending. What is that referring to? The pending? With the, I, I keep a, a list of pending issues that could be a cost to the district. So those values are in item D, so the pending is just the balance that's left. So, change orders that have been executed, the two change orders that are on the list tonight, and then sort of a laundry list of risk management items I have, all add up to the one point two four four million dollars standing right here. Okay, so then what what would be an example of something that's pending? It, I probably shouldn't really have that there. It's just the balance of what's left. Okay, all right. Pending is basically what we have left to make continue. Okay, so it's really just the remaining balance. Yes. Okay. All right, thank you. And then just for the percentage completion, Jason, I know last time you had shared the middle school, I think the middle school was at 60% and the high school was at 40%. Is that, is that accurate or has have those numbers moved since the last time? So I have that. Those numbers wrong, so I have them all by memory right here. Was it so? So, we, we talked about that last time, and in the report this month, I added on page four kind of the executive project summary. Uh, we have a column we call percent paid. Um, so, the percent paid isn't always the same as the percent complete. Do you understand that? Right, so there's a lag, right? So there's, there's, there's retention monies that are retained by the district contractually. Right. That technically, on a 10% of their contract value up until they're 50% complete. So the point is, is that the money you paid out is less than the actual work in place. So it's a little skewed. If you look at that, you may think you're not as, as far ahead as really much, but you really are. Further ahead, that they've actually put more work in place than you actually paid monies for. Because you're retaining 10% of every dollar you give them, you hold it as a retention to assure that they complete all of their punch lists, their own M manuals, their ass belts, and close out the project. So it gets incrementally reduced. I think contractually, if this one reads like a typical AIA, after the 50% uh, work in place, they're allowed to reduce the retainage uh, to a lower value. But the point being is there's actually more work in place than you actually have physically paid out. So it's a little different if you're going to report it as money's paid out versus work in place. Right. There's two different ways to report it. 
And I think what you're saying is you're reporting it by money's dished out rather than marketplace. Correct. On that, finish. on that page, if you turn to page 11 in the report, <coughs> so just sort of another example. I have down below in the, the two charts. Um, on the right, I kind of have this payment duration whip analysis snapshot. So generally showing the months completed, uh, and then a total completed store to date invoice, and then sort of our estimated work in place. So you can see that the total completed and store to date work in place are close. If you jumped over to the invoice percentage column, you can see under the total paid less retainage, those percentages are low. So that's where it gets skewed sometimes if you're looking at the wrong percentage. <coughs> yeah, thank you for that distinction. I think that's a disconnect. So to sort of touch on your question earlier, Julie, too, we're seventy-five percent invoice for the, the middle school. I Meaning there's, there's a lot of work in place, and your risk has been greatly reduced in that building with respect to. Anybody else have any other questions? Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much, thank Jason. Thank you, Mr. Day, Mr. Tarmino. <coughs> While they're fresh in our minds, can I get a motion to approve uh, the Gallo Mechanical Change Order Number Two? Ms. Tell, second. Second by Mr. Kearney. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Uh, Mr. Stevenson opposed it. So, uh, so moved. Mr. Jamie, would you like to comment on why you opposed? Yeah, same thing as before until we get some accountability on this stuff and where these are, how we're going to handle these changes. That I'm not going to approve them right now. Okay, thank you. Uh, and I dropped off the call a little bit, so I apologize. Did you guys talk about uh, the, le the latest uh, lower door result? We have not gotten into that at all. <clears throat> Do you want to ask that question of the of the of PJ Dick? Not, not a question. It's just wanting to know what the results are. Uh, building performance architecture did issue that report, Jamie, uh, last week. Uh, it was issued to the primes, um, very similar to the first test in the middle school. Uh, similar to the result? I didn't hear that, I'm sorry. Sim you say the result for it? Similar to the first test of the middle school. Okay. Uh, a lot of the, the same issues, just some of the construction not completely done. Uh, building performance architecture did identify some areas, so uh, primes are looking at those and going to address those areas. Um, one of the bigger challenges for that test, if you're driving down 79 and you see that sort of left side of the addition, it looks incomplete um, with some insulation, and it's metal panel not even installed. Uh, that's done for a purpose to get the man lifts around that corner. Uh, Is it Ross' opinion that the results are going to change drastically from where they're at now? I think he's hopeful they will. I, I don't can't speak for him. Um, we can act, we, he would have to answer that question. Yeah, I'd be curious based on what, right? Like, what would have changed to expect the the results well, worse, be different. Worse, um, 
four thresholds not in, permanent doors installed rather than plastic barriers of doors, caulking of the and windows. So, um, I just to like make that. sure, just to make sure we we are on record again, IKM confirmed that their design, if constructed correctly, would meet those would meet those uh, air infiltration rates as designed. That that's what uh, Matt said, correct? Yeah, that's what Matt said. Yeah, when final construction is complete. Okay, just making sure we're clear. So we should be able to hit those marks. Yeah, I think that's the goal of the entire team. Um, and as discussed before, just testing during construction is, is challenging, but we're trying to give Rob the best conditions for him to do those tests. And I identify where potential leads may occur. So Jason, even if he doesn't, even if those tests aren't conclusive because it's not the ideal conditions and things aren't complete, yes. I mean, at the end, to Jamie's point, if IPM doesn't meet those numbers, or, or the building, I should say, doesn't meet those numbers that I can read, so what, what would the recourse be? Or what? I, I, we, we can't answer that because we are not, we were not part of a building envelope testing issue. We are, we're tasked with making sure your project is built to the plans and specs that these contractors have fit towards. And you can't really con do, conduct that testing to meet that market until you have those final exterior parameters in place. But I also can't speak for IKM as to what they informed you or how they went about telling you what their design was intended for. We are simply tasked with making sure that what you bought as a district, plans and specs, is installed as per plans and specs. I do not do energy modeling. We do not do design work to verify energy modeling. We can only manage this project to make sure that you get your building as per your plans and specification. What they promised you and what they tested, we are not privy to, nor is that our specialty. So, I cannot answer that. Uh, we're trying to, as Jason said, afford you with testing methodologies on a temporary basis, although I would argue that they're probably not real valuable at this particular point until such time that the permanent envelope is constructed. I mean, I would actually like to put out to the board that at some point in time we consider stopping the temporary testing and waiting, just waiting until Final construction. Yep. It's point for discussion. Yeah. I mean, that I, makes I, sense. I, I just think it, it, it could be potentially harmful to the schedule and potentially wasteful of money. So, th those two points I think are something we should discuss as a board. So. Yep. To that point, I think I mentioned before that Ross QA inspections. I think are valuable. I do too. Yeah. That he's been performing. Yes. I, I believe there's a value there. It's it's keeping the contractors sharp, it's making them double think how they're installing, what they're installing, how they're installing it, and then it gives us a, 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 a the ability to go back and say this isn't right or wrong. Right. But the blower test to me with incomplete construction, I just challenge the, the validity. All right. Appreciate that, guys. Okay. We'll move on to 4.8. Approve change order number 02, RB Mechanical. <coughs> this will be to approve, get a motion to approve RB Mechanical change order number 2 as listed for an ad of $17,575.00. Change order has been attached. I get a motion. So moved. Mr. Kaczynski. Second. Second by Mr. Kramer. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Mr. Cora, Mr. Stevenson, did you pass the vote? James. I can't, I didn't hear what the vote was. It passed on me. Yes. So moved. That's good for me. I'm sorry. And then we have one more. Our conferencing, our conferencing capabilities are terrible, by the way. <laughs> We try to encourage you to be here in person. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Tony. But, you know, you've been to meetings too much. I, I totally agree. 
4.6, I need to get a motion to approve monthly construction payout summary. This motion is to approve the monthly payout summary for billing through the 31st of July, 2017. Does anybody have any questions or comments about the monthly payout summary? So I'm just curious, what was the process, the review process, given that Nick is no longer here in terms of these invoices? And Scott, I don't know if you can, I don't expect you to be able to answer that, but I'm just curious. I know Dr. Wayne, I know a few parts of that since this year. Verify it. Yeah, I think that was in his summary. They were going through and reviewing them and making sure everything was in the correct spot. So. Yeah. It was so in the summary on Friday. Yeah, I saw that, and then also indicated that there was some discrepancies too, which has me worried. So, you know, it goes both ways. So, um, I was saying he was addressing this. I think he was mistaken. So, going forward, is this something maybe the finance committee would be reviewing um, until we have someone in place or until we figure out? Um, Process. That's been the process in the past, actually. So the, the Nick would generally have presented the head monthly payout bid up by this community meeting. Right. Right. And then we discuss it and you know, bring it as a recommendation to us whether or not to approve it. Uh, in, in this case, uh, there was no finance committee approval of this of these, uh, of this summary, but Brian did address it and gave me his confidence that he felt it was accurate. So just going to the question of the path forward starting next second half of August or September yes. one. Yeah. Well we'll have the finance committee for our next week and then we'll be able to review with Kim and Scott. Okay. So she's teed up to do that. Yep. Oh, yeah. Brian's the leader. Yeah. Brian's still the transition. So can I get a uh, motion to approve the monthly payout summary for going through to July 31st, 2017? Mrs. Lesnick. Second. Second by Mrs. Murphy. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. So moved. Okay, even though the, it is not on our agenda, and that's something we have to change, I would like to um, first make a comment that I appreciate all the public comments that came in tonight, and we take everything that anybody says to this board very, very uh, seriously. And um, you know, for someone to get up and speak to us on personal matters in the public setting, it takes a lot of um, guts and, and uh, integrity to, to do that, and I appreciate those comments. Uh, with that said, I'd like to also close with any other additional comments that anybody else would like to make in the public. So, uh, if there's any additional comments, please step forward. Okay. Real quick, um, yes. you asked Mrs. Murphy to do, she actually asked her to volunteer some, to do some uh, much informational work for this board. And, and I just have to say, I, I've seen a number of these over the years. And, um, I have to commend you. It was a fantastic job, and thank you for volunteering. Well, thank she did a great job. Yep. Well, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we will uh, at this point then get a motion to adjourn. So move. Mr. Flora. Second. Second by Mr. Kearney. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned.